Trick Metal fan here, bring you guys a brand new 2020 album review. And today we're going to be looking into the long awaited album from the band Demons and Wizards entitled Three, which is released today through Century Media Records. Now, for those of you who don't know who Demons and Wizards are, they're a power metal side project that formed in the 1997 by John Schaefer of Iced Earth and Hansi Kirch from Blind Guardian. And what Demons and Wizards are, if you could roughly tell by the name, is a um, like sort of like combined sort of like the darker kind of like more evil, sinister kind of like melancholy like riffs riffs from Iced Earth, hence why the demon part, and the wizard, sort of like the more melodic, kind of like epic, kind of like vocals from Hansi being the wizard. And in 1999, or well, two, I think it was 2000 actually, they released their self-titled debut album, which was a pretty good album, but it wasn't until a few years later, in 2005, they released Touched by the Crimson King, the band's second album. And who knew that we, it wouldn't be until 15 years we would hear a new, new anything from Demons and Wizards since, of course, Hansi has Blind Guardian and John Schaefer has um, Iced Earth. And th th those, they, they both said that their main bands are their main priorities. And when they ever get to do Demons and Wizards, they'll just get to it. But yeah, yeah, this album, new album three, live up to what Touched by the Crimson King is. In my honest opinion, I feel like it definitely has. I feel like after 15 years, I feel like this album just what blew me away. I mean, I only got into the band about a year ago, and I was pretty much just been kind of a fan since. Um, and this was pretty much well worth, pretty much worth the wait. Um, the one thing to know about is the production. The production is pretty great, pretty damn good. Um, vocally, Hansi Kirch is just great. I mean, I'm a fan of him in Blind Guardian and in Demons and Wizards. I feel like his epic vocals are just really just shine on this on this album. And sort of like the riffing that that John Schaefer does is just great, and just I don't know how he does it. Like, like he's just like a riff machine. And the bass is pretty audible, and of course, drumming wise, the drum drums are just pretty much held. So from what I heard on the album, it was actually Brent Smeldy, who from I Start also drummed on the album, which is pretty cool. So yeah, without further ado, let's sign this album track by track. Now starting things off is Diabolic, which is actually the bit, the first single that was released from this album, the first taste of new Demons and Wizards. And this is like, a, has the mysterious guitar intro and ethereal background sound, sort of like builds up tension that grows slowly until the first distorted the riff that creates a sonic explosion that takes the song on a very heavy and dark twist by Demons and Wizards standards. And Hansi's unmistakable vocals depict a personal ceiling style that has developed within Blind Guardian, but the big difference is that the production sounds a bit more, much more organic than the last works of like the German bars, which is especially noticeable in like the exquisite sounds of the drums. And the break towards the end of the track is returning to its initial mood, bringing the circle together and allows to take a breath before continuing the journey and definitely one of the greatest tracks so far on this album um moving on to invincible which is a more straightforward track heck with more sort of a like conventional structure though not less effective and the main riff and vocal line are quite melodic and easy listening with sort of pompous and very well achieved vocal arrangements perhaps it feels a little bit short of ideas but to consider it among the most outstanding creations this duo has come up with anyway Okay, moving on to the next song on here, which is Wolves in Winter, which draws your attention from the beginning with its sort of like aggressive attitude and heavy sound, including some inspired John Schaefer delivering those razor sharp triplet fill riffs that give sort of like his world, them, the, the, I can't even speak to giving him sort of like the world fame. And this song is almost feels musically as closer to like Iced Earth, but Hansi also makes sure that as his own influence, contributing with his charisma and magical touches and sort of like the courses of the song. Another highlight. Like for me, for the new album, or pretty much one of the highlights to say. Um, Final Warning, which brings up an interesting mix of elements with a soft start progressing towards with more complex tempo, commanded by impetuous galloping guitars, perfectly accompanied by a solid Brent Smedley behind the drum kit. It, and it's just at one, though pretty much the shortest track on the album, ending somewhat abruptly, kind of like you hanging on a cliff. Anyway. Next song on the album is called Timeless Spirit, and it captures a very ghostly, ominous harmony, taking you on a haunting journey, starting off soft, and the song leads up 
to some heavy riffs before ending off with an epic guitar solo. And honestly, the ending of the track kicks in with some, some serious ass, and this song in particular showcases the vocal range of Hanzi, paired with some truly brilliant and speedy guitar riffs and solos from John. And it is very melodic, very, but yet very atmospheric, and you don't need acid if you're listening to this track, because it will take you on a trip. Anyway, moving on to Dark Side of Her Majesty, and yeah, I feel like like Hanzi pretty much steals the show with his incomparable, powerful voice and epic, massive choirs that predominate sort of like this mid-tempo like song, which starts pretty promising but somehow gets diluted and becomes a little bit redundant. It's a correct track and has fulfilled its purpose in the bridge between like the two halves of this song, this album. But in the end, it pretty much goes a little bit into oblivion. But that's just me. Moving on to Midas Disease, which is as a heavier rock peak pace which more of a hard rock kind of like groove to it and i like the placement because it right away grabs your attention it almost feels like you're listening to a different album in a way it's radically different from anything demons and wizards had put out before and i feel this song alone will bring controversy to the album fans will either love it or hate it and i found it kind of very if refreshing and enticing of the album it pulls you away but at the same time it sort of like demands your attention Anyway, the next song is New Dawn, which is a song that brings back the necessary nuances and sonic layers that catch the listener's attention. And the change of intensity and alternation between light and dark are one of the key elements of Demons and Wizards' success, allowing John and Hanzi to use their full arsenal of magical spells. Um, Universal Truth, which is a track that also includes some novelties, including predominant use of keyboards and more a prominent bass line. And Hanzi's work is mon mental once again reaching the unseen levels and explosiveness with huge vocal range and his lines continue to improve over the years and i think his experience with blind guardians will at least release the toilet orchestra has made him grow even more as a vocalist um split which is perhaps in my opinion the heaviest song on the album it's solid start to finish with a head bang your tempo and more kind of like an aggressive attitude to it is in guaranteed blast for their live performances it reminds me of like the glory days of like ice earth in the 90s these kind of like almost remind me a little bit of like the matt barlow era of the band anyway and then the album closes with children of cain which is the longest song on here which is about 10 or so minutes long and this song is just remarkably beautiful right from the beginning you are flooded with emotional vocals which the, and really great lyrics like the raven has come at last very haunting and poetic words spoken but don't get too relaxed listening and the song just picks up very hard and around the middle of the track like you're hit with power and it's sort of like a way to finish off this album and and i think it's a great way to end this album now overall three will take you on a journey it's sort of like everything you would expect from demon the wizards it's pretty gr pretty good album i should i was kind of impressed so if I were to give three by Demons and Wizards a score, I'm going to give it probably a solid 8.5 out of 10, probably a 9. I and mean, it's pretty much, a, I was kind of impressed. It was like waited 15 years for a new Demons and Wizards. So yeah. So yeah, that's my review of the new Demons and Wizards album, guys. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about it. And I'll see you all in the next video. And as always, keep it metal.